and welcome to fundoperator.com. I'm Andrew Vertwain, the editor, and today I am joined by Daniel Zentowski, the tax director for PwC based in London. Hello, Daniel. Hi, Andrew. Good to see you. So Daniel is an operational tax expert, and today he's going to discuss these matters around the asset management and fund operator sphere. So Daniel, I was wondering if you could start off with a bit about your background and your role. So I'm a tax director at Price Waterhouse Coopers, and um, uh, my my background is in U.S. taxes. But I've been focusing over maybe the last ten years on operational taxes in particular. And I was wondering if you could talk to us more about operational taxes. There, it's something that not everyone's going to know about, and that's obviously a very important aspect of fund operations. So could you could you give us the sort of 101 on operational taxes and what people need to know? So it's a big topic, Andrew, and um, everybody seems to have a slightly different definition of what are operational taxes. But essentially, they um, they apply in scenarios where you have an intermediary that's acting on behalf of somebody else. So a good example that would be is if you've got investors in a fund and a fund makes investments in in various investment assets, um, there will be taxes applied to those investments and there'll be some reporting that the fund needs to do on its investors. So it's a collection of kind of intermediary taxes and uh, information reporting about investors. Mm. So it's obviously, you mentioned there that it's a big topic and that's obviously, you know, we want to get down to the granular. So talk to me in today's current climate, what are the big themes and what are the big issues that you're seeing around this? What are your customers coming to you and saying, I need help with this? Well, Andrew, I think uh, over the years, um, tax authorities have become more sophisticated in, in how they process information on tax returns and, and tax reporting, and they're looking at compliance more generally. And so when they look at the investor in an asset, they see typically first the fund. And so there's a big demand at the moment for data. Tax authorities are looking to get data and they see essentially funds in, in many cases is sort of the, the doorway to, um, to getting access to data around investment and investors. And it helps them police the, the tax regimes that they have set up in their, um, in their specific jurisdictions. Mm. Okay, so we've got what you do and we've got what the operational taxes is. So if I was a fund operator or an asset manager or I was working in the investment sphere, what do I need to know to manage my operational tax? Can you talk us through the taxes and the asset services for an asset manager from their perspective? What do they need to know from you? So there's a, a wide range of, of, uh, of players in the market. Um, some of them will have dedicated teams that look at this specifically. So the tax product team very often will, will take a role in sort of the governance and the supervision of sort of oversight of, of how they comply with the various rules. Um, in other cases, though, we see a lot of these activities are outsourced to third parties. So you might have a fund administrator doing some of this work. The custodian could do it or other service providers. And so we see a wide range in the market and um, that presents different needs in terms of where you are in the market. So we do a lot of specialist consulting to help teams, internal teams, understand the rules and, and comply. And then in other teams where they outsource the, um, the compliance activities, um, we help them with sort of oversight um, and, and support, making sure that their um, agents and the third parties doing work on behalf are, are doing the right things to the right level of um, and, and standards. Hmm. So, okay, we've got the current market. What issues are you in those those things you just mentioned? What issues are you seeing in investor reporting, which is obviously a huge issue that lots of people are having to put a lot of money and time and resources into? And what are the wider challenges around this? And I want to ask you if you could speak specifically about data, uh, especially around how sort of asset managers are having to learn to work with data, especially around that regulatory compliance angle, which is obviously something that is eating up a lot of resources at the moment. So over time, you know, tax rules have become more complex and tax authorities are asking for more information. And so it's not just kind of regular kind of information that you will get, you know, from a management perspective, it's tax sensitized data and tax authorities are very interested in sort of how the data is configured and changed to produce that tax sensitized data. And um, they're becoming far more sophisticated about how they use that data because they're actually using it to profile investors to make sure that they're compliant and reporting the right things on their own individual tax returns. So we're seeing really a, a big demand um, around data to make sure that you get 
data, it's um, transformed in the right way to produce the right tax outcomes. And when there are failures, and this is really where we're seeing a lot of um, interesting discussions in the market, it's about traceability of that transformation journey, right? So it's understanding when the tax authority says, how did you come to this conclusion? It's essentially proving the journey that the data took to get to that result. And um, we're seeing you know, big challenges in the market because the information that required is required is so, uh, there's, it's, it comes in really large volumes. How you get good accuracy Accuracy and traceability around sort of how that data is transformed. Is it accurate? Is it correct? And is it producing the right kind of outcomes? Because the tax authorities are using it in a more sophisticated way these days. Mm. I think the, the the sort of getting that holy grail of data and that sort of golden source. It's a big debate about whether you need that or whether you should have clean data or good dirty data or just use it from any source. It's it's obviously a huge topic that we could talk about for hours. But I wanted to ask you about the future. And we're obviously in the sort of the post-pandemic phase of, of the market. And a lot of people are coming into this new normal and they're they're looking to grow. They're seeing larger resources. They're moving their businesses into different spheres. They're doing different things in a different market. So looking into your crystal ball, what are you seeing as the big sort of tax issues for fund operators over the next few years? And, and where would you sort of guide them to look into, into solutions? So I, I think as I, I look into my crystal ball and it's an actual, it's, it's reality today, Andrew. So it's not much of a crystal ball. Um, it's more, more reading the tea leaves. Um, it's, uh, it's around the digitization of data. So pre-pandemic, a lot of the operational tax work was paper-based, um, manually processed, um, wet signatures, and that really didn't work during the pandemic. Uh, the whole system shut down and, um, and investors lost out largely. Um, and so what we're starting to see is the digitization of the operational tax journey. So um, when customer documentation is provided, or sorry, investor documentation is provided to the asset manager, um, how do you digitize that? How do you transform it and create an automated process to configure that data, to transform it, and to report it. And the reason that's important is because there's an expectation, I think, from tax authorities over the next couple of years to get something that looks a little bit more like real-time reporting. And so the, the real way to do that is to make the whole thing digital. Um, the tax authorities, I think, will probably start to set up portals to, to consume information in that format. And we're already seeing a little bit of that in the market at the moment. So we're going to see the modernization of tax collection and tax digitization, which I'm sure will be music to some people's ears who never ever want to fill in a paper form ever again with the tax man stealing most of their money. But maybe we'll see that. You think we will? We'll live to see. Um, that is all of our questions. That's all of our time today. So thank you very much, Daniel Zendowski from PwC based in London and their tax director. Uh, and thank you very much from me, Andrew Between, the editor of fundoperator.com, and we will see you again soon. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you, Andrew.